The Vale of Aaron is the last kingdom in my map detailing series. I didn't plan on making this many, but a lot of you guys kept asking me to keep going, so here we are. This region is very naturally fortified by a bunch of mountains, so the people don't have to concern themselves of invaders. And since they're so far east, they only share a border with the Riverlands. The only successful land invasion happened 6,000 years ago when the Andals invaded Westeros from Essos. The Andal ships first landed in the Vale and easily conquered the First Men that were already living here. There weren't that many First Men living in the Vale during this time and the Andals were coming in large numbers and it didn't help that the first battles took place here so they were in full strength. The First Men had trouble organizing against the intruders but eventually they united under the Bronze King. The Bronze Kings was a title held by House Royce in their home of Runestone. After some battles, the Landals united under the Arryns. The final battle would take place at the bottom of the biggest mountain in the Vale called the Giant's Lance. The First Men were defeated and a lot of the surviving First Men houses submitted to the Arryns as their king. The ones who didn't scattered across the mountains all around the Vale called the Mountains of the Moon. They would become the Vale's mountain clans and are as barbaric and primitive as wildlings beyond the wall, even up to the current story. There's a bunch of different clans who pester the people of the Vale. They don't have much, so resort to raiding and attacking villages than anyone they spot traveling near them including highborns. The only interesting clan in my opinion is the Burn Men. They have this brutal ritual of burning off a body part to prove how much of a warrior they are. They are more respected depending on how important a body part they burn off. They originate from the Painted Dogs Mountain Clan, but would branch off after the Targaryen Civil War 170 years before the start of the current story. The Burn Men would become the clan that all the others fear most because of their sick practice. When they began worshipping a fire witch with a dragon, the clan would send boys to bring offerings to the witch and risk being burned by her dragon as the original rite of passage. Because of how heavily hinted it is, most fans believe the fire witch to be Nettles and her dragon to be sheep stealer. Nettles was an ordinary girl who befriended a wild dragon by feeding it a bunch of sheep over time. She would become its dragon rider and fight in the Targaryen civil war called the Dance of Dragons. She would abandon the battlefield, however, and fly off in the direction of the Vale. Since this kingdom was the first to be hit by the invasion, House Arryn have been the family in power the longest out of all the Andals. They built their home at the bottom of the Giant's Lands, where they defeated the Bronze King and the rest of the First Men. The castle the First High King, Artis Arryn, built is called the Gate of the Moon. It isn't an impressive castle, and considering how short and strong it is, I would call it more of a fortress. Artist Aaron's great-grandson realized this castle was no place for a king after realizing how impressive the Lannisters, Castle of Castle Rock, and the High Tower in Old Town. They began the construction of the Eyrie and turned the Gates of the Moon to their home only in the winter. They would appoint someone called the Keeper of the Gates of the Moon to watch over their home when the Aarons were staying in the Eyrie. Their new castle would be built at the peak of the Giant's Lands, thousands of feet in the sky. Not only would the Eyrie be smaller than their former castle and winter home, but it's actually the smallest of all the great castles in Westeros. The location of this place makes it completely impregnable so there was no real need to make a bulky castle. To make sure it would be as luxurious as possible, the Aaron responsible for its construction had marble brought into the Vale from Tarth in Stormlands. The Vale is already cold enough as it is in the winter, but because of how high up the Eyrie is, they have to escape the winter and live a little more comfortably down below at the base of the mountain. The extravagant white stone was used to make seven thin towers that can only hold 500 people. Inside of the high hall is the moon door. It's made up of weirwood and placed on the floor in order to open up to nothing but the skies down below. It's used for executions. The Aarons really know how to put fear into criminals since the dungeons in the castle are the sky cells. Prisoners don't have a wall to protect them from the cliffs of this huge mountain. Just to demonstrate how high up the Eyrie and the Giant's Lance reaches, a waterfall called Alyssa's Tears on the Mountain turns to mist before ever reaching the ground. It's named after Alyssa Aaron who didn't shed a tear when witnessing her husband, her brothers, and her children killed in front of her. Robert Baratheon and Ned Stark were both fostered by John Aaron as his wards. Robert's parents died before this point, so he needed someone to guide him to becoming a good lord. Ned was the second of three sons, so he could be used to make an alliance with the Vale. Because of the strong connection these three shared, they were able to fight off the Mad King when he wanted the heads of Ned and Robert. There was a double marriage with House Tully to make this alliance even stronger. John Arryn married Lysa Tully and Ned married her older sister Catelyn Tully. John and Lysa's only son Robin is the last Arryn left alive in the series, which is troubling because of all his health issues. The Eyrie is so well guarded that the Mad King would probably have never been able to reach them. 
The Vale's army has some pretty good numbers and are capable fighters. But the path to the Eyrie is a death wish for any invader. The Bloody Gate blocks the path through the mountains. Along the path are three way castles. The first way castle on the way to the Eyrie is called Stone. The second further up is called Snow and the last way castle is called Sky. The Veilmen could attack from a higher position atop the Bloody Gate or any of the way castles. The Knight of the Gate is a title given to a commander to watch over the Bloody Gate. This position was held by Brendan Tully for a while after Robert's Rebellion. If someone manages to get past the Bloody Gate, they still have the Gates of the Moon further ahead, but it's not like any army has made it through the Bloody Gate. When the Targaryens were conquering Westeros, their dragons made taking the Vale easy. After seeing how easily a dragon can make it to the Eyrie, the Aarons had no choice but to surrender and lose their title of kings and become the Lord Paramount of the East. Moving on from this location, the series of peninsulas at the northeastern portion are called the Fingers. This was the specific location where the Andals landed. Back then, two minor kings styled themselves Kings of the Fingers and each wanted the Andals to join their side, but instead the Andals betrayed them, exterminating both families. A family you may recognize that lives on the Fingers is House Baelish. They own a tower on the smallest of the Fingers. They rule over a very small amount of undesirable land. This family began when a sellsorter from Bravo sailed to the Vale to serve House Corbray of Hart's home. His son would be a hedge knight who created the Baelish family sigil. The sigil is in the likeliness of the Titan, a statue that also serves as a fortress protecting Bravos. The hedge knight's son would be the first Lord Baelish, who was the smallest of lords, and his son was Peter. Because their land is on the smallest peninsula of the Fingers and Peter was pretty short, he got the nickname Littlefinger. The land here isn't fertile, instead there are stones everywhere instead of plant life. It also rains a lot over here, making it even more undesirable. Peter detests his home so much, he calls his family's tower the Drear Tower. Its real name hasn't been written if it even has one. Peter was lucky enough to be raised in the Riverlands as the ward of Lord Hoster Tully. This doesn't normally happen to a family with as little power as the Baelishes. This only happened because Peter's father became good friends with Hoster Tully when out fighting a war. Peter or Littlefinger would be sent back home after challenging the man Catelyn Tully was supposed to marry to a duel for her. Before Catelyn married Ned, she was actually betrothed to his older brother Brandon Stark, who was a very capable fighter. Peter took wound after wound during the duel, even with Brandon holding back after Catelyn begged him not to kill him. While living in the Vale again, Littlefinger would remain close with Lysa Tully, who was married to the Lord of the Kingdom, John Arryn. The fingers resemble actual fingers on a hand, even having five peninsulas. There's a couple islands off the coast here. One called Pebble, ruled by House Pryor, and the other called the Paps, ruled by House Elsham. The bay of water between the north and the Vale, where these two small islands are, is called the Bight. There's a group of three islands here called the Three Sisters. Their names are Long Sister, ruled by House Longthrope, Sweet Sister, ruled by House Borrel, and Little Sister, ruled by House Torrent. Long ago, these islanders ruled themselves under one king of the Three Sisters. They had their own religion and the people here are known to have webbed hands and feet. Some of these people lure ships in with their lighthouses to pillage their ships. They didn't have the best reputation in the past. House Sunderland who ruled over all three islands were referred to as pirate kings and sent their people out to raid. A Stark king finally retaliated after the Sistermen took one of the Norse castles. The Stark king conquered the Three Sisters and the event became known as the Rape of the Three Sisters. How Sunderland and the rest of the Sistermen were left with no choice but to kneel to the Aran kings of the Vale for their protection. For a thousand years, the Starks and Arryns fought over this land in the war called the War Across the Water. Ownership of the islands switched back and forth between their kingdoms until the Starks finally lost interest. Some would refer to it as the Worthless War because of this. To this day, the Sistermen aren't very loyal to the Arryns and have no love for the Northernmen for how much they put their people through all those years ago in the past. All this took place 2,000 years before the start of the series, so that's a long time to hold a grudge, considering they started this war. Heading back south, there are some houses and castles with little written about them near the fingers. There's House Coldwater of Coldwater Burn, House Linderley of Snakewood, House Belmore of Strongsong, and House Hunter of Longbow Hall. And then there's House Waxley of Wickendale. If you couldn't tell by their candle-themed name, the Waxleys are known for their scented candles. Near Runestone is the only city in the Vale. Gulltown is a wealthy port city ruled by House Grafton. It's one of five major cities in Westeros, and fourth largest when comparing populations. The people here don't have the protection of the Mountains of the Moon like a lot of the other areas of the Vale. But because of all the ships coming in and out of here, they could afford to have stone walls to protect them. With Peter's close ties with Lysa Tully, he was given the position of Control of Customs at Gulltown. 
He was bringing in more money and performing so well that John Aaron, who was the hand of the king, brought him to King's Landing where he became master of coin. Below the many mountains scattered across the kingdom are valleys with very fertile land. House Wainwood of Iron Oaks, House Malcolm of Old Anchor, and House Redfort of Redfort are houses in these valleys. The main path through all the mountains is the high road. It's the only path to the Erie that starts west from the Vale and the Riverlands. But traveling through this road is not safe. There are a lot of natural obstacles and even shadow cats on the hunt, let alone all the mountain clans that target the high road. And that covers the last in my map series, the Vale of Erin. Every kingdom has a strong defining theme and this one is clearly mountains. I'll keep an eye open to see if any other location has enough information for these type of videos, but for now, I think it's over. Hope you enjoyed this one and all the rest. See y'all later.